Hey there, welcome back. We are studying for the technician level exam and now we are on element three, sub element B. What is the relationship between the electric and magnetic fields of an electromagnetic wave? The answer is they are at right angles. And the way I remember this is with the right hand rule, if this is your electric field, then this is your magnetic field. So if it's polarized this way for electric, then the uh, magnetic field is at a right angle. If you are looking at it like this, it's hard for me to show, but if electricity is flowing horizontally, then your magnetic is flowing at a right angle. And if you want to take a look right here, this is an electromagnetic wave. You have the electric field and then the magnetic field is at a right angle to that electric field. Question number two. What property of a radio wave defines its polarization? And that is the orientation of the electric field. So this particular field right here looks to be vertically polarized. And if you were to rotate it 90 degrees in either direction, you would then have a horizontally polarized antenna. Or a radio wave for that matter. And what are the two components of a radio wave? Well, we've just learned electric and magnetic fields. So anytime electricity flows through a wire, then there is a magnetic field that flows around it. And it kind of spins around like this. And uh, that is called the right hand rule. What is the velocity of a radio wave traveling through free space? And that is the speed of light blazing fast. That's because it's an electromagnetic wave. All right, question five. What is the relationship between wavelength and frequency? Well, they are inversely proportional. That's not the answer. But as the wavelength gets shorter, the frequency increases because you have more of them in that same amount of space. If it's all traveling at the speed of light, then this one is going to only have one. If I reduce it by half, now you're going to get two in that same time frame. So as the wavelength gets shorter, the frequency increases. Remember that waves can be measured, and we can use this picture again right here. Let's just look at this mechanical wave. You can measure from peak to peak or from trough to trough, and you can get, I like to do peak to peak, it's a little bit easier, but trough, if you do trough to trough of a full wavelength, I mean, it does give you an intersecting line, which also makes it pretty easy, but that is your wavelength. So imagine if you made this by half, or shrunk it by half, you would have twice as many for a shorter wavelength. Let's go to question up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Try to get ahead of ourselves. What is the formula for converting frequency to approximate wavelength in meters? The answer is the wavelength in meters equals 300 divided by the frequency in megahertz. So you're not going to divide by a big number. You're, if you're on 20 meters, that's 14 megahertz. So let's try a couple of these out. So 300 divided by 14 megahertz equals, well, 21. So that's pretty close to 20 meters. It gets even worse if you go to 40 meters, which is 7 megahertz, and you divide by 7. It's actually 40. 2.8 so you know it's 40 meters but it looks like they rounded down a smidgen uh, let's do one more let's do 300 divided by 3.8 which is in the 80 meter band and you can see even if you go to 300 divided by 4 which is the very tippy top of 80 meters you can see that's why they sometimes call it 75 meters. 
and then you do 300 divided by 3. Point, is it 3.5? Gosh, I can't even remember, but you can see that one's closer to 85. So in the 80 meter band, you've got quite a swath there. And let's try one more just so you can see. 300 divided by 28.3, which is where the technician license gives you voice. Oh, sorry about that. It should say 10.6. Got a little excited. 300 divided by 28.3. And you can see that that's 10 meters. And if you want to do one more just for fun, Let's do 300 divided by 146.52, which is your simplex calling frequency. That's 146 megahertz, and that gives you about 2 meters. So you can see that the math does work out. Question number 7. In addition to frequency, which of the following is used to identify amateur radio bands? And that is the, notice they say, approximate wavelength in meters. It is rounded down just a smidgen. Okay, number eight. What frequency range is referred to as VHF? Now, VHF stands for very high frequency. VHF is 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. This is just something you have to memorize. There's really no rhyme or reason to some of these numbers. Question nine, what frequency range is referred to as UHF or ultra high frequency? That is 300 to 3000 megahertz or three gigahertz. So just above the frequency of your microwave or your Wi-Fi uh, if you're using the uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Alrighty, what frequency range is referred to as HF, which is just high frequency, and that is 3 to 30 megahertz. And we just saw that around 3, that is your 80 meter, and then 30 megahertz is just above your 10 meter band, which is at 28, and goes up to... I think right smack dab at it. Uh, 10, 10 meters is, is pretty big. Alrighty, so question number 11. What is the approximate velocity of a radio wave in free space? And that is 300 million meters per second. And this is why it is 300 divided by millions of hertz to find it in meters. Hey, there's some quick math for you there at the end here. Alrighty, so I didn't stutter too bad during this, uh, this one, but hey, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you like and subscribe. If you want to click that bell so you can get notifications of when I post new videos, go ahead, but my feelings won't be hurt if you silence the bell and I'll never know. Hey, thank you so much. 73 from W1RCP.